Right, let's move on with our trigonometry. This next instruction says simplifying to a single trig ratio. Remember, we still use the same building blocks that we started with. If you look at the cutters and plane, where is 90? It is on top. Where is 270? It is down. Whenever I ask you a question, go to that quadrant. Go to that angle. Where is 90 on top? Where is 270? Down. Does 90 and 270 change the ratio? Does 90 and 270 change the ratio? As you do this, you go up and down, you are saying yes, it will change the ratio. Does 180 and 360 change the ratio? No, it doesn't change the ratio. Let's move on. Remember, all stops to tax web. Tan x, I can change that. I can change tan x into sine x over cos x, right? Can I change that? No, I leave it as cos x. Cos x, of course it is over one. Let me look at my denominator. Okay. This times that, it is minus sine squared x. This times that, it is minus cos squared x. That's what I have. Remember, cosine there goes once. We're left with sine x on my numerator. Let's look at what we have here. Ah, we've got two, two terms. This one and that one. What do you notice? A common factor. What's a common factor there? Both of them have got a negative sign. Let's take it out. Negative into what will give me that one? Into positive sine squared x. Negative into what will be given negative? Into plus cos squared x. Ah, remember the question that says simplify to a single trig ratio. You wanted to have sine theta, or sine theta, or cos theta, or tan theta, or whatever. Single trig ratio. This then will give us this is sine x over ah I can see the square identities. What is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta? It is one, so this is minus one. Eventually the answer will be equals to uh, minus sine x. Now it is a single trig ratio. That's how we go about doing these problems. Thank you.